Ola. I have a video for everyone. Um, this is going to be Bucklew versus Prike. Prike. Ni two, two twenty nineteen. Um, so there you go. Uh, Russell Bucklew uh, was con I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I don't really care. Was convicted by a state court jury of murder, kidnapping, and rape, um, and he was sentenced to death for his crimes against humanity. Uh, after exhausting the state appeals process, Bucklew was scheduled to be executed on May 21st, 2014. He then filed an action in federal district court alleging that the execution by Missouri's lethal death, death injection protocol would constitute cruel and unusual punishment in violation of the Eighth Amendment as applied to him because of a unique congenital medical condition for which he suffers. According to Bucklew, lethal injection would likely cause him to hemorrhage during the execution, potentially choking on his own blood, which would be pretty painful. As an alternative method, Bucklew proposed execution by nitrogen hypoxia. He also requested discovery of the qualifications of two members of the lethal injection team, alleging that they might not be qualified for the positions which they are hired. The district court granted summary judgment to the state, finding that Bucklew failed to show the state's execution methods prevent, present a risk that is sure or very likely to cause serious illness and needless suffering, and give rise to sufficiently imminent dangers, and failed to propose an alternative that is feasible, readily intimate, readily, readily, readily implemented, and in fact significantly reduces a substantial risk of severe pain, both of which steps are required by United States Supreme Court precedent. Additionally, the court denied Buckley's request for discovery, finding that it was inappropriate to assume that Missouri employees' personnel were incompetent or unqualified to perform their, their assigned duties. Reviewing the district court's finding, de novo, um, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuits affirmed the lower court. So, it went to the Supreme Court, argued on November 6, 2018, not that long ago, does the Eighth Amendment's does the Eighth Amendment require an inmate with a unique medical condition to prove an adequate alternative? What evidence is required for a court to determine whether an inmate's proposed alternative is significantly reduces the risk? May a court evaluating as an unapplied challenge to a state methods of execution <clears throat> assume that mentally medical personnel is competent? And does the petitioner meet his burden in proposing an alternative execution matter, method under Glossop versus Gross? Okay, four questions. Ooh. So essentially, um, does he get an exception? Uh, what evidence do you need? Uh, can you tell can you tell an employee sucks? And then burden of proof. Okay. So in a five to four decision for Preketh, um, the court ruled that a death row inmate alleging that the state methods uh, this is written by Neil Gorsuch alleged that the state method of execution constitutes cruel and unusual punishment in violation of the Eighth Amendment on its face as if, and, and as a, or as applied um, and must show that a, there is a feasible or readily intimated alternative. Um, blah, blah. It, it, it is on its face unconstitutional um, if they can show that there is a feasible and readily intimated alternative which would significantly reduce or substantially reduce and that the state refused to adopt the method without a legitimate penological reason in the 5 to 2 opinion, I'll have a no Gorsuch, the court held that Bucklew did not meet his burden. So, there you go. For the, for the court first considered the proper test for challenges to lethal injection protocols as applied to a particular inmate in Bayes versus Rees, um, which found that a plurality of the court, the plurality of the court found that um, the state's refusal to alter lethal injection protocol could violate the Eighth Amendment only if they emit, first identify a feasible and readily implementable solution, which would significantly reduce risk of pain. In Glossop v. Gross, the majority of the court clarified the plurality opinion and base was controlling. The Eighth Amendment does not guarantee a painless death, only punishments that intensify the sentence of the death. Um, no cruel, unusual punishment, not no, not no, you know, painful punishment. Uh, in fact, most punishment's pretty painful, if I, you know, anyways. Um, anyone bringing an Eighth Amendment challenge must therefore satisfy the base goth Glossop tep. Bayes Glossip test. Sorry, the court rejected Bucklew's argument that methods posing a substantial risk or suffering when applied to a particular inmate should be considered categorically cruel. Bucklew failed to show the Missouri lethal injection protocol would super add 
to his death sentence. It sounded like he deserved it, too. So, uh, the court then considered whether Bucklew satisfied the test, finding that he had not. The, the, the majority identified two reasons. Bucklew failed to show that his proposed alternative was viable, and he also did not produce adequate evidence that nitro hypoxia could be readily, intimate, read, readily implemented. Jeez, I can't say that. And second, he failed to show that the state lacked a legitimate reason for declining a switch from its current method. Um, finally, the court found that even if Bucklew had satisfied his burden of proof showing a visible alternative, he failed to show the alternative would significantly reduce a, sub a substantial risk of severe pain. Clarence Thomas joined the majority um, in full, but offered a concurring opinion, reiterating the position that he expressed in the concurring opinion in Bayes that a method of execution which violates the amendment only as if it directly designed to inflict pain. Um, Brett Kavanaugh also concurred, um, but underscored that additional holdings that the alternative methods of execution needed to be authorized under current state law. So even if you could prove all that, it's still not under law. Um, and the law needs to do that, obviously, but just it needs to be under state law. Um, Stephen Breyer authored a dissenting opinion, and Bader, Ginsburg, Sonia Sotomayor, Kagan, joined uh, all two but th three. Um, Justice Breyer argued that Bucklew had provided sufficient evidence. Um, the court could, uh, could conclude by lethal injection would subject him to impersonal suffering. Basically, they just all disagree with all that. Um, there you go. I mean, that's really, I mean, I, I'm not going to go over all that. It's way too much pain. Um, so essentially, uh, essentially, it's just like kind of a no to all the questions. Um, you have to, you have to have evidence that it would significantly reduce your pain. You have to find that, uh, um, uh, that it's viable, that, uh, I mean, all of that, right? I mean, yeah. Okay. That's all I got for Gil. I don't really think capital punishment jurisprudence is very interesting, honestly. Kind of, I kind of dislike it. Um, kind of just boring subject to me, but it is what it is. Okay. But I mean, there's so many court cases, and they're all just so stupid. Sorry, anyways. Bye.